Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to speak about uh, correlational games, which is a very important branch of game theory, specifically an important branch of cooperative games. So, a situations with more than two parties, variations on a three-party negotiation, for example, the seller is uh, selling multiple transactions or uh, one seller is trying to sell something and uh, more than two people are potentially looking to buy it all these are examples yeah this is the example that we said a seller is selling something and two buyers are trying to contact try to negotiate try to buy so what is a coalition a coalition is essentially interacting group of people deliberately constructed and issue oriented it is not for a general talk for a particular issue they want to talk they exist independent of formal structure lack formal structure focus goal external to the coalition it require collective action to achieve goals so in a coalitional game there are a set of agency n and each subset can work together in various ways leading to various utilities the coalitional game studies which outcome should materialize key criteria are stability and fairness so stability means no coalition of agents should want to deviate from the solution once you find a solution and fairness is agents should be rewarded for what they contribute to the group types of coalitions so one type of a coalition is potential coalition which is an emergent uh, interest group that has a potential to become a coalition for example a latent coalition on an emergent in interest group that has not yet formed maybe when blockchain came or tensorflow came up uh, potentially a new group started say tensorflow user group of that particular city uh, that could be considered as a potential uh, group that is latent coalition dormant coalition interest group that are previously formed but is currently inactive operating coalition one that is currently operating active and uh, in place established versus temporary established is relatively stable active running on an indefinite uh, time space time and space sorry and uh, temporary coalition operates for a shorter time focused on a single issue or a problem there could also be recurring coalition maybe started as temporary but uh, the problem is not solved so we want to restart the coalition work on it now in coalitions players can form groups coalitions and the coalition makes a decision as a group not individually the worth of the each coalition is the amount total amount that the players from the coalition can jointly guarantee it's measured in abstract units of utility two fundamental questions are how, which coalition are likely to be formed how will the coalitions redistribute the payoffs among the players take an example one seller and two buyers on a horse market the seller for the seller the horse is worthless to him unless he can sell it players 2 and 3 are valuing the horse at 90 and 100 units respectively which contract will be accepted by all the players another one is an owner of a business each of the other players contribute an amount 10000 to the total profit no profits are generated without owner what is a fair distribution of a profit so we can go on forever there are a lot of such examples say united nation security council of five uh, permanent members and 10 other members every decision must be approved by nine members including all the parliament members what is a voting power of individual members 
mathematical model of coalition game is defined this way there are n players there must be finite set of players a coalition is any subset of n so it is a mapping 2 to the power n to r such that v of null set is 0 so any coalition a less than or equal to n the number v of a is called as worth of a for example for a three player uh, situation one two three all non-empty subsets are uh, coalitions one two three one two one three two three and one two three the including null set there are two to the power three eight coalitions possible and there could be a worth associated with it say c of one alone if one is alone in the group what is its worth v1 or when one two and three join together the worth is v7 etc etc such as monotone constant sum super addictive and come back and verify that the given uh, coalition is monotone and super additive but not convex So what will happen in holds market typically it will happen such that after 90, 90 rupees player 2 has to give up and uh, player 3 for any amount above 90 he can make a deal alternatively player 3 can offer player 2 that a man I'm going to offer a price more than 90 which is more than what you value at so better I will give you ten dollars as uh, 10 units of money as a token for just coming here you get lost I am going to then I will make a deal with the seller for probably say only 20 bucks so I have a huge profit it's up to the negotiation skill of player 3 here an example of coalition applied in a mobile cloud environment is given in this paper by Dr. Professor Dushit Niyato and uh, other authors so mobile cloud computing combines wireless access service and cloud computing to improve the performance of mobile application and uh, a potential coalition is the mobile provider coalition creates a coalition with the cloud provider uh, so that the offloading can be done on a powerful server interested readers can are referred to go and read the paper let's take a problem market with two sellers and one buyer so there are two sellers who has a DVD we for which he paid hundred dollar and offers to sell it buyer sets a worth of two hundred dollars on the DVD he is interested in paying the lowest possible price and of course he is unwilling to pay more than two hundred calculate the coalition function Note that in the uh, horse market example, we clearly said for a seller, unless he is able to sell the horse, it is worthless to him. But we did not say such a point here. So, if the sell does, if the selling does not happen, for the seller, it is still hundred dollar worth. So, if you see n equal to one two three. Seller 1 has DVD worth 100, seller 2 has DVD worth 100, buyer doesn't have anything, so it is 200. V of 1, 3 is also 200 because 1 can sell it to 3 at a cost x, and for 3 the profit is 200 minus x. Similarly, 2, 3 is 200. And actually what is 1 to 3? Seller 1 sells says to seller 2 quit the game and don't compete with me. In return I will pay you P dollars upon closing the deal. And uh, 1 sells the DVD to buyer for Q dollars Q greater than P. So seller 1 gets Q minus P, seller 2 gets 100 plus P and uh, buyer 3 gets 200 minus Q. So the total worth will be 300 intuitively which is also true I value the item as 200 so if I buy it we I have an item worth 300 I mean 200 
plus someone who is still trying to sell has a hundred dollar item so total is 300 so the solution will look something like this null set zero and then individually act in groups how much the worth for each coalition another problem in this game there are n players who can achieve say one provided they all participate otherwise they will receive nothing so how do you formulate the characteristic function post this video write on a sheet of paper your findings and then proceed it's quite straightforward v of s is 0 if s not equal to n v of s is 1 if s equal to n isn't it in a voting body like parliament players are parties and each party has certain number of representatives so there is a concept of weighted, weighted majority games let n be the set of players an n person weighted majority game with weights and quota q is a cooperative game defined by v of s equal to 1 if sum of weight of i is greater than or equal to q and 0 otherwise let's take an example of three parties each with representatives 5 3 and 7 and uh, the number of representatives is called weight let so weight be w1 equal to 5 w2 equal to 3 and w3 equal to 7 8 so v1 v2 v3 are 0 the moment any two of them join 5 plus 3 or 5 plus 7 or 3 plus 7 they won so a potential answer is 8 it could also be 7.5 need so now suppose one needs two third of the total sum of weights in order to pass a decision what will be q naturally 10 because total number of people are 15 two third is 10 simple some definitions a game is zero normalized if it is zero one normalized sorry if v of i equal to zero for all i if it is 0 1 normalized that means it is 0 normalized and v of n is 1 elements i and j of n are substitutes or symmetric players in the game so v of s union i is v of s union j means v of i should be v of j they are called symmetric players can you identify uh, some of the symmetric conditions here in this game v of 1 3 and v of uh, 2 3 are 9 so 2 and 1 are symmetric for player 3 very good a simple example here is a problem for a practice an advertising agent approaches three individuals 1 2 and 3 ask them to sign an advertisement saying that they like to drink certain soft drink the agent says he is interested in obtaining at least two signatures if 1 and 2 sign the agent will pay them $100 if 1 and 3 sign the agent will pay them $100 if 2 and 3 sign the he will only pay them a total of $50 if all 3 sign they will get a total of $120 you can try calculating the coalition function for all possible coalitions Another example, uh, a, a quite a complex uh, coalition game. You can see there are symmetric players, null players. So, null player essentially means V of S union, I is same as V of S. So, I does not contribute anything to the existing coalition S. So, null player does not contribute anything, so null player also will not get any additional benefit. There is an important concept by uh, Shapley, a scientist in uh, game theory, who came up with four conditions or axioms which offers an unbiased judgment of how to divide uh, V of N fairly among players. It's formulated back in 1953 by Professor uh, Lloyd Shapley. The four conditions are symmetry condition. If I and J are substitutes, then the worth for both of them should be same. If i is a null player, then worth for i should be 0. 
if uh, efficiency condition is worth of individual player sum should be or total worth additivity if there are two sub games for which the worths are phi of i of v and phi i of w then it sum sum should be the sum for the joint game so symmetric game is reasonable because we seek a fair division that is acceptable to all players the explanation is something you can read upon which is already explained in my previous slide by myself division of payoffs 30 should be divided among them how is it 10 10 10 no right because a null player gets nothing symmetric player should get equal payoff so it will be 15 15 so this is to illustrate an example of the first the fourth condition so if there are three small games u v and w and t and v is a larger game so u for 1 was 30 v of 2 was 20 and 3 they were sharing something so you see here v of 1 to is 80 so how do you get that v of 1 to will be u of 1 2 plus yeah, w of 1 to plus t of 1 to which is 30 plus 30 plus 30 80 so that is true so in a game player 2 is a null player in a game nw player 1 is a null player and in game nt player 1 and 2 are symmetric players so you can now determine the division of payoff and determine the division of individual game and you can verify that the fourth condition by shapely is satisfied the answers are there like this individually phi of u was 30 because others were contributing zero phi of w is 20 for second player phi of t is symmetric division divided to two players and the third player who is a null player gets nothing for v it is 45 and 35 so instead of analyzing v as a bigger game by analyzing the smaller games we can sum them up to get the uh, value following the fourth uh, axiom shapely has also been kind enough to give us a uh, close loop solution for finding uh, pay of the division of payoff which is guaranteed to satisfy all uh, four axioms is that equation looks uh, terrific no don't worry imagine that the coalition is assembled by starting an empty set adding one agent at a time with the agent to be added chosen uniformly at random within any such sequence of additions look at the marginal contribution that is what we are looking at by v of s union i minus v of s the last part now multiply by s factorial different ways the set s could have been formed and uh, different ways as n minus s minus 1 factorial ways the remaining agents could be uh, uh, added finally sum of all possible sets s and obtain an average by dividing n factorial so this is quite a simple close loop solution right take this example of voting game a b c d which have 45 25 15 and 15 representatives they are to vote on whether to pass a 100 dollar million pending bill and how much of this amount should be controlled by each of the parties how much money if it is fair for each party to demand think now in 50 million is for 5a 5a you should be able to calculate 5b 5c 5d in fact what i suggest is you just verify this equation by yourself there is a self practice question that you can code find out the answer at your leisure time summary of shapely value is it allocates the value of a gr group according to marginal contribution captures some simple axioms and logic okay some examples in computer science domain content delivery network live streaming video on demand use peer to peer architecture to reduce operating cost the shape 
users opt in to dedicate part of the resource they own to help the content delivery in exchange for receiving the same service at a reduced price. So shapely value is ensuring that each player, be it provider or a peer, receives an amount proportional to its contribution or profit sharing in wireless networks. <coughs> Several service providers offer wireless access service to their respective subscribed customers through potentially multi-hop routes. If providers cooperate, that is pooling their resources and they agree to serve each other's customers, they potentially get some additional uh, efficient utilization of resources and uh, profit sharing. Web service cooperation, for example, Assume there is a web service to translate Chinese to English and another web service to translate English to German. You could potentially cooperate these two together to forge and translate Chinese to German, isn't it? <coughs> so all these examples are uh, referred below in the URL, so please feel free to go look at it. Uh, many more examples such as multicast routing, distributed caching in P2P networks. So with that, uh, let me thank you uh, for watching this session. Feel free to leave comments uh, or show your impressions if any. <coughs>